Nobody's even talking about it today. It's not on anyone's radar. Hey, everybody. I'd like to just kind of go through a couple key things that happened today that are extremely important. We saw this massive sell down at the end of the day, and we're going to get into the indexes at the end. So please stay for that. It's very important what transpired. But it's important for us to understand why that happened. So in front of me, I have crude oil. Crude oil, we're just looking at the continuous contract, and we're just going to look at the one for Brent. And you can see clearly here that we actually went up today. And the question is, why did we go up today when we're depleting our supply through uh, our Federal Reserve? And the answer to that is because of what's going on out there right now. So in front of me is the US dollar and the ruple. And what we're going to do is we're looking at the comparison. And what we're going to use is we're just going to use this date of February 21st. And we're going to just focus on the fact that right now we are basically down 1% to break even on the exchange rate. So since this happened, we are break even. This is how much we were up over 71% to now we are break even. Why is this important? This is crude futures during the same exact time. So if we go to the 21st and then we mark this time off and we come across, you can see that oil is up 8% at the same time that sanctions were put on. So sanctions are put on, Ruple gets devalued, while that's going on, oil still stays up 10%. So essentially what happened here was the cost of goods across the globe based upon these sanctions has gone up dramatically and the ruple has become flat. This has empowered Russia into a really good position to argue for what they want with energy, which is pay me in rubles. So based upon that, it means that you now need more dollars to buy oil than ever before. About 10% more dollars than you ever needed to buy oil. So that has become a problem. At the same time, you have India and China that are paying $35 less off this number. So that means that their economies are gonna be able to be stimulated faster than the US economy. So that's going to make GDP contract. That's some of the reasons you're seeing signs of a recession. So now that we have that out of the way, what can we do about it? Very simply, we can focus on what's in front of us. We can look at stocks like this. We've been talking about this stock since $4.80, and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. But today we clearly popped over that. Now during the speech, we sold back down. But once you get over this wedge line, and just use this wick for now, 1552. Once you get over 1552, it should be risk on again. You'll remember what this did in 2003 during the Iraq war. So we started literally here, okay, and just wound up just having a monster run. Now, I'm not suggesting you're going to have the same kind of run over multi years, but I am suggesting that this does have the possibility to get back to this 37 in the next 12 to 18 months. I think that's very realistic. Uh, even if you're just looking at it for a short term trade, the safest bet out there right now is going to be energy and fertilizer until this settles itself. They're talking about peace talks again tomorrow. I, I do not hold a lot of faith in them going anywhere. So I am looking at those names, uh, the fertilizer names I like a lot. So we, we're selling down and now you're just seeing us respect the 21 day. Again, flip this wick and I'd be very interested in adding to this yet again at 105.50. I think this has great opportunity. LNG, so the fact that this is selling down really doesn't fit the narrative. The narrative essentially is that the US is going to sell gas, liquefied natural gas, LNG, to the European Union. Why would this drop? if they're going to get off of Russian gas. So that's a key metric here. So it's kind of interesting that this is coming in. Maybe we get fortunate enough to get to that level, but right now we're not there. We're more just in this middle. Watch this, 143.82. I think this could be an absolute monster. I think this has a lot of potential, but you want to focus on these names. Now, the names you're probably going to want to stay away from a little bit are names like Rig. Why, why stay away from names like that when we were so bullish on them the other day? Because the drillers, we're probably not going to see more drilling permits from this current administration. It's not a political statement, it's just a fact on where they stand with energy policy at this time. Obviously, that can change in six months, but this is where we are right now. And what that's going to do is we're not going to drill. We're going to have our supply, and that's really going to be the end of it. So just kind of keep that in mind uh, when looking at these, at these names. Now, what is that going to do for us? Well, it's going to present opportunity in certain spaces. 
I would argue that if you want to be in this space, you're, it's going to be really hard to go wrong with Exxon. It's going to be very hard to go wrong with names like Chevron. Okay, and I really want to focus on the macro here because this is one large macro trade. These are not going to go away. Okay, this this whole energy sector trade is not going to go away anytime soon. This fertilizer trade, okay, these are these are names that we were buying when they broke the 21. They are not going to go away. If this doesn't settle soon, you're not going to be able to get wheat out of the Ukraine. It's just a fact. You're going to have a real issue there. And you can start seeing how this is kind of rallying and then pulled back. But even at these levels, if you start running again, and let's say you get over this 1050 level, it'd be nothing to see this test the new highs again. And that's a nice 20, 25% move. So yes, we can look at some of the tech names and we're going to, but I really want you to understand the macro on what's going on there. And then at the end of this, I'll get into the indexes and how it's affecting it. But the important methodology to take away from that is USGD contraction, whether that is 0.1, so we're not in a recession or it's negative you know, 1%, doesn't really matter. It's that we're going to contract versus global GDPs uh, of more developed countries right now because of what's going on and what we've, you know, what's happened with these sanctions. So keep that in mind. You can see these kinds of names move. This is one uh, that's in the newsletter. If you don't get the newsletter, you can get it. Free versions right below, just click in the link. But we've been long this for some time. If you don't need wheat, you need corn. So right off that level today, you bounced, look at this close. Nobody's even talking about it today. It's not on anyone's radar. We're closing at a new high. Now, where does that sit on the monthly chart? So if we close here, which is the end of the month, and you're closing into this, then realistically, we're kind of heading towards this level. That 29.50 is next. I like this trade. And I think it's realistic to see a, a, a substantial move in this. I do. Remember, this move in 2014, this is when we had problems in the Ukraine before. So it's very possible to see this continue. Now, let's just talk about some other things that are going on out there. GameStop came out and they are doing a stock split. There's really no reason for them to do a stock split, except that it's obviously just going to create buzz around the stock. If it gets over this level tomorrow, 199.50, if you get over that tomorrow, you could possibly push just because people are short squeezed and they're going to have had enough. AMC is moving up on this for some reason. I really don't understand besides that they're trading in tandem. Uh, the stock's obviously not splitting. They're obviously not going to split a $25 stock. So I'm not really sure why that's moving with it. But if this could get through 2641, maybe you could push to that level. If not, it's probably just going to fade all night long. Aggressive investors can look at actually shorting it after hours. But let's just talk about the the 800 pound gorilla and what's going on out there. So at the end of the day, we obviously today window dressing ended. And if we just kind of take a look at what's going on out there and clean up all this and get rid of all these indicators and let's just talk about the end of the day. So all day we were holding these levels and we were bouncing off of them. Potential bounce spots gave us entries right? Rejecting resistances, you know, supports flip the resistance, doesn't matter the time frame. That's just how it works. The slicing down on NVIDIA, the slicing down on Tesla at the end of the day was extremely troubling. Now, why? Because we saw $10 billion market on close order sell at the end of the day. I can't tell you the last time we saw a number like that. So what that means to me was, institutions are masking what they're doing and they waited to pretty much the last minute to get out of the market today. So that does not bode well for technology tomorrow. And that was somewhat troubling because I, I was feeling really good about tech all day holding in here. Now, there are signs that we could have rolled and we knew that this was coming, but the way we were holding in here, I, I didn't see it. And frankly, this chart did not look like this to the last 15 minutes. And that's why you have to trade what's in front of you. Broke this doji, closed at a low. You know, this looks like it could sell down. If you get follow through on this, and let's say you break something like this 1173 tomorrow, which is very reasonable, it's nothing to fill this gap tomorrow and come into 1040. So this might be something that if you're you know, inclined to look at puts, uh, I already have puts on this and I am short stock. So this can very well get to that 1040 level. We'll have to see tomorrow how this transpires and how that plays out. Uh, but that, that was concerning. This was concerning as well. Now let's talk about the socks. These were our levels. This is what we were talking about. Let's put the bells and whistles back in and look at the indicators. Here's the 200 day. I do not want to close below the 200 day moving average. This is not where we want to be closing at the low of the day. This is pretty much setting us up for this to be a magnet. 
which is going to be massive pain tomorrow in some of these semi names, which I actually still have some long positions in. Uh, and I, I may leave some of them on, but this is setting up for for a test of that level. Now, what happens after that pullback remains to be seen, but we're leaning towards a pullback right now. Now, if we look at the cues, this is what we were talking about yesterday in the top five. You can see how this all starts connecting. See, connect. see how this holds right there? See how this held right here and then broke? And then we broke this level, filling the gap. Filling the gap was fine. I was fine with that. All day in the trading room, I was talking about this is healthy. We just filled the gap and we held. That's not what happened. We sold down 1%. Look how fast we moved today. Just to put this in perspective, this is the level I'm saying is healthy. This is what happened in the last half hour of the market. We dropped 1%. That's not great. Who sells at the end of the day? Institutions. So they dumped. They dumped and energy did this. Energy sold down on this wedge line, which I just think is people that are wanting to get out. So we have to be aware of that as well. But what happened with the 10 year? The 10 year people are buying bonds. People are buying bonds. What happened with the VIX that we've been watching? We went over this in last night's newsletter. The VIX is back over the 200. Okay, it's risk on. So another trade that you could do, and you can even do it tonight if you want to be aggressive, is overnight you could add and start a SQQ position because it's possible that tomorrow uh, we, we could have some, some selling pressure tomorrow. Now, again, let me just st state this because when things don't happen, I get comments. And please do comment. These are my opinions. I don't have a crystal ball. So this is what I think is gonna happen and this is how I'm positioning myself overnight. So I just wanna throw that caveat out there. Okay, everyone, have a great evening and remember, trade to win tomorrow.